hard <laughs> lately because <laughs> the pandemic has been scary, frustrating, and super isolating. Mm -hmm. And that isolation in particular can really start to mess with your brain. But let's all take a communal deep breath and just try to relax a little bit. We're gonna make this video more personal and more casual because today, October 10th, is a day that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, it's actually World Mental Health Day. Uh, World Mental Health Day is a day to raise awareness about mental health issues and share resources that might help those of us who are struggling. And this year, uh, we wanna take this opportunity to talk about a topic that's more relevant than ever. Touch starvation. Touch is a powerful means of communication. It's the first language we learn as infants, and it's the first sense we develop in the womb. Beyond just being useful for feeling pain or heat or pressure, our sense of touch also helps us share emotional information. And it turns out we're pretty good at understanding this kind of emotional touch. In one study where participants were separated by a physical barrier, except for a hole large enough for an arm to pass through, researchers asked one person to communicate an emotion to the other person using only a one second touch to their forearm. Emotions like compassion, gratitude, anger, love, and fear were correctly guessed more than half the time. We crave this physical interaction with others, and it shows up in all sorts of environments, whether that's a warm embrace or a playful nudge <laughs> or you know, a firm handshake or a reassuring hand on your shoulder. It makes us feel close to friends and family and it builds camaraderie. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, especially now, <laughs> that need goes unmet. Mm -hmm. We've all been advised to practice social distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and as such, touch with friends or family is pretty much off the table. No more high fives, hugs, or kisses on the cheek. It's just, you gotta, you gotta throw it all out. You wave at a distance. I made a video a while back about how to cope with social distancing, but like so many guides, I didn't talk about how to cope with, uh, you know, this lack of touch during this time. I never well, mentioned how to deal with this aspect. Yeah, well we didn't, I mean, at the time, we still thought that maybe by summer it would be under control. Exactly. So we didn't think that it would be so long. But it just keeps going on and on. And as such, more and more people are suffering from touch starvation. So this time we're gonna fix that. Let's talk about it. Touch starvation, which is also known as skin hunger or touch deprivation, describes the psychological and physical effects a person experiences due to having little to no contact with other people or animals. Research around touch starvation is still in its infancy, although I can imagine that a lot of researchers are getting a lot of good data right now. Mm -hmm. So far, it appears that touch deprivation can have serious, long-lasting effects on your mental health, including depression and anxiety, feelings of loneliness, insomnia, and low relationship satisfaction. Ironically, it may also impact your immune system, making you more susceptible to illness, like COVID-19. It's sort of like sleep. You can get by with less sleep for a little while, but eventually you'll start to really feel the effects. He's trying to get those plants. I know. Allie and I are really lucky to live together because it means that we can be each other's outlets for touch. Uh, but even so, I felt touch starved. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Yeah, when I see my friends and family, when we moved and weren't able to hug any of our friends goodbye, that was really hard. Yeah. And so since the quarantine started in March, I've literally only touched, on purpose, two other people, uh, which were my parents. And when I did that, when I gave them a hug, I felt both guilt and relief. You know, on one hand, I felt bad because I felt like I was breaking the rules and putting myself and them at risk by giving them that, that hug. On the other hand, I felt great, mm -hmm. you know, because I felt connected to them and happy in a way that only a hug can communicate. Yeah, that sort of... That closeness, you yeah, know, it's intimacy. just like that. It really mm -hmm. helps. We bet that a lot of you have also had a really hard time navigating this particular challenge, figuring out this balance between sort of this need and the risks involved. 
We are innately social creatures. Yeah. We evolved to rely on social and emotional connection with other human beings. The COVID pandemic has lasted so much longer so long. than any of us were expecting. And I'm sure that many of you are getting sick and tired of having to always follow the rules even though you know it's good for everyone. Those of you who are following these guidelines have sacrificed a lot, and we are grateful to everyone who is working so hard to keep our community safe and healthy. Thank you so much for wearing your mask, maintaining social distance, not going to large gatherings, doing all those right things. We know that you have the willpower to keep doing what you're doing until this virus is finally contained. But in the meantime, we've got a few activities that you can do to cope with touch starvation. Yep. Take it away, therapist Micah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a licensed counselor, I've got a few coping skills that you can try at home to help alleviate some of the effects of touch starvation. <laughs> Sorry, like kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. First, if you've got a dog or a cat or any other sort of pet, then maybe spend some time cuddling them. Of course, don't make them do anything that they don't want to do, but petting an animal can help decrease anxiety and can give you a sense of contact with something living, right? Can give you that contact that you crave. Loki. He does not want this. <laughs> Second, if you've got a soft bristle brush, like you might find on a paintbrush or some finer hair brushes, mm -hmm. uh, you can take that and run it firmly over parts of your body to activate your skin's nerve endings. This technique is sometimes referred to as brushing therapy, and uh, it's also used with kids who have sensory processing disorders, so it may be useful here too. Mm -hmm. Third, spend some time touching your own body in long, slow movements. Now, I'm not talking about this in a sexual way, although you could as well, but <laughs> rather just talking about uh, taking five or 10 minutes to run your hands over your skin. Now, you can do this in a warm bath or in a hot shower, or you can even use lotion or oil and sort of treat it like a massage. Yeah, just so love just your a, body. Yeah, exactly. Get back in touch with yourself. Fourth, Sleep with a body pillow or a weighted blanket. I can vouch for that second one. <laughs> Allie uses a weighted blanket all the time and it's super useful. <laughs> but if you're living on your own, uh, then you might use body pillows to sort of mimic the feeling of being hugged or cuddling another person. Mm -hmm. uh, and weighted blankets in particular, you know, they put pressure on your body, which helps calm anxiety. And using these tools may release neurotransmitters like oxytocin, which are the same neurotransmitters released when we feel connected to other people. And finally, move your body. Moving your skin stimulates your uh, brain, and so that means that exercises like yoga or dancing or sports that emphasize body movement can produce some of the same benefits as touch. Mm -hmm. So, get moving. Yep, Micah runs, I bike. Yep. Do it at least three times a week, and I feel so good after I get home. It's so good for your mental health. Mm -hmm. I'll always advocate for exercise. <laughs> Of course, there is no real substitute for human touch, and none of this is to downplay the very real and difficult challenges faced by people who are living alone and who are not really able to interact with others right now. We just hope that some of these activities can give you some of the same benefits. I know that we are incredibly lucky to have each other and our awesome cats to snuggle at a moment's notice. If you're having a hard time with touch starvation, you might consider bubbling with a friend so that you have at least one person who you can hug or be near while you both remain otherwise socially distant from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had some friends who've been bubbling and they've said it's been going well, yeah, all things considered. Absolutely. It reduces your risk, but you still get that contact with the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And consider connecting with a therapist, if that's an option available to you. We know that it might not be for everyone. Mm -hmm. For all you Touch Starved people out there, we really feel for you, and we are sending you a virtual hug. Well, take it easy. And until next time, I'm Micah. And I'm Allie. Think about it. <laughs>